Truebird. I'm a Canadian distiller making spirits in England. If you're interested in distilling or the drinks industry, then this is the channel to subscribe to. So, what are we doing in today's video, Dave? So today, we're actually distilling our molasses wash in our small stills and also in our bigger stills. So let's go. Rude Dave, I'm your biggest fan. Can I have your autograph? Yeah, sure. Part 4 of the making of our Shakespeare rum. The links to the other parts are below in the description. The molasses wort that we prepared in our last video has been actively fermenting away. Here's Sam, our brand ambassador, checking out the fermentation when it's most active. Sorry. Breathe it in! Yes! <laughs> Looks like he got hit with a face full of carbon dioxide. The molasses wash has been fermenting for one week in our 2000 liter ice still fermenter. The final gravity has come down to 1.007 and it seems to be stable at this specific gravity, which means the fermentation is complete and the sugars in the molasses wash have been converted into alcohol. So I'll take a small container of the molasses wash to do a test distillation in our copper pot stills. The alcohol percentage is approximately 7%. And to make sure these stripping runs don't take too long, I'll divide 2 liters of the molasses wash among 3 of these alembic copper stills. Okay, so I've turned all three stills on and I've set beakers underneath all of them to collect the low wines. I keep collecting the low wines until the spirit coming out is 7% ABV or less. Why this number? Well, David said that after this point, the flavor coming out is very undesirable. And he also read online somewhere that it isn't economical to keep collecting alcohol after this point. I'll combine all of the low wines together and record the volume of low wines I collected and also the alcohol percentage. Then I'll charge this into another Alembic still and do the spirit run for my rum. For this run, instead of big beakers, I'm using these mini beakers and small glasses. I've numbered all of them and put them in order. I'm going to collect the rum in 20 milliliter volumes or fractions. The first fraction will go into number one and so on. And I'll stop collecting when I think the taste has become bad. I collected 21 fractions and so I'll just turn the heat and water off now. I'll line up the fractions and call David and Salmon so we can taste each fraction and determine where we want to make our cuts. We'll choose which fractions will go into our final rum and which fractions will be discarded. This will give us a rough idea of how our rum will taste when we distill it in the ice still later on. When we're tasting now, as long as we're not getting that cardboardy, soggy cardboard or cardboardy yeah. flavour, yeah. we can assume that we can actually keep it in, okay. in the batch. For that third dimensional spirit. For that third dimensional back of mouth flavour. After the taste test, we've decided to keep the fractions from 2 to 19, so they're in and the rest of the fractions are out. I'll just combine those and dilute it down to 40% ABV with reverse osmosis water. It's tasting good so far. We wanted a fruity rum with a bit of bite to it, so because we cut into the tail section of the run more, we're getting a bit of the bite in the back. Our rum is meant to be enjoyed on its own or mixed with a coke, so that's one of the things we're looking for when we do our taste tests. That test left us feeling quite optimistic. 
Now it's on to the big ice still distillations. We have around 1600 liters of wash in the fermenter and the capacity of our still is 500 liters. So we'll have to distill our wash in at least four batches. David and I are filling up our still with the molasses wash now. It smells good so far, but it has a bit of a sour, metallic-y taste due to all the citric acid we put in it to lower the pH. We've closed the bottom valve on the fermenter and are just walking the hose over to the eye still so we can push all the wash left in the pipe into the eye still. We've charged the eye still with 500 liters of molasses wash. The eye still is interesting in that you can set it to pot still mode or column still mode. I asked David what the difference is between the two modes and here is how he explained it. So you see on the top of the still here is what they call the robot. There's basically a valve in there that can be opened and closed to varying degrees. In pot still mode, the valve is mostly open so the distillation will be a lot faster since more alcoholic vapor can pass through the robot and more spirit will be collected more quickly and we'll get more flavor in the collected spirit as well. Whereas in column still mode, the robot is in a more closed position so less vapor can pass through, meaning the distillation will take longer, but we'll also get more reflux inside the still, which means that the alcohol we collect will have a higher alcoholic percentage. Now the eye still is advertised as being able to distill rum, whiskey, or vodka in a single distillation from the wash. So you don't have to do a double or triple distillation like in a traditional distillery. So we were hoping we could have a finished white rum after just one distillation from the molasses wash. For the first batch, we put the still on pot still mode and we collected 100 liters of hearts at 36% ABV. In Europe, rum has to be at least 37.5% ABV in the bottle. So our percentage ABV wasn't high enough and most worryingly, it smelled really, really bad. When I came into the still room, I thought David had farted a bunch of times before I came in. I was trying to be polite and not say anything, but then I realized it was our rum that smelled like really bad farts. When I went to try it, the spirit tasted burnt and plasticky. For the second batch, we put the still on column still mode. Again, as soon as the spirit started collecting, we got a bad fart-like smell in the room and the taste was still burnt and plasticky. The spirit that was coming off the eye still was totally different from the spirit we collected from the small copper stills the day before. Since the taste didn't improve from putting it on pot still mode versus column still mode, we decided to treat all of our distillations as stripping runs. Once we had completed the stripping run distillation of all the molasses wash, we combined the low wines from all of them into one. So after distilling all 1600 liters of wash, we had 280 liters of low wines at 40% ABV. Then we loaded this back into the still and put it on column mode again. From this spirit run, we collected 130 liters at 74% ABV. When it was all finished, I took a sample of our white rum and added reverse osmosis water to it to bring it down to 40% ABV. I let it sit for a few days and then we had a group taste test. We all enjoyed the white rum. There was a bit of a fruity nose to it and it paired well with the Coke too. 
We contacted iStill afterwards and someone said that the burnt smells and flavors could be caused by solids in the wash getting burnt onto the heating elements inside the iStill. So next time we're going to try to heat the iStill at a lower temperature and to rack off some of the dead yeast from the bottom of the fermenter before transferring the wash over to the iStill. This should remove some of the solids from our wash, assuming that this is indeed what the problem is. So I hope you enjoyed watching us distill our molasses in our big and small stills. In the meantime, please support the channel by giving this video a thumbs up and hit the subscribe button below for more distilling videos. This is Boober. And this is Dave. Sending good vibes your way. We'll see you next time.